Today we are going to paint this landscape scene with the bright light hitting this field. So the first thing that I do is I lay out a simple drawing of the scene. After that, I wet down both sides of my paper. And I'm not getting my paper soaked, just evenly damp on both sides. And doing this is going to give me a little bit more time to paint wet into wet and really create that nice glowing feeling of light. So the first thing I'm doing here is mixing up some raw sienna, some rose matter permanent, and laying in a light tone for the clouds. So this is the warmth that you see in the clouds up there. Next, I'm going to mix up some more pigment, and this is going to be some of the shadows that you see in the cloud. And I'm getting a little bit stronger here. I'm using some neutral tint, rose matter permanent, and some raw sienna. Now my paper is still damp and I'm painting back into the area that I just painted a minute ago. And I love creating these soft edges in the clouds. I'm not trying to be too precise. I'm really just trying to get a feeling, a loose feeling for the clouds. I'm not trying to paint them exactly as they are, but just to capture the atmosphere of this time of day. Now I'm once again mixing up some thicker pigment this is going to be the blue of the sky, so I'm negatively painting around the clouds, preserving the, the brightest areas of these clouds by painting around them. And you'll notice that I'm still getting soft edges. Some of the edges are a little bit more defined, but overall the edges are still soft because I dampened my paper before I started, and every time I go back and paint, I'm adding a little bit more moisture to the paper. But this is a lovely way to paint skies. I like the loose, undefined nature of painting this way. What I'm trying to do here is to break up shapes that seem a little too uniform, adding a variety of brush strokes, and really just trying to make it look as natural as possible. And after I laid the blue into the sky, now I need to lay a little more value down for the undersides of the clouds, some of the shadow sides of the clouds that aren't getting as much light. I really like how the sky is looking at this point. I could leave it this way, but I really want to stay true to the feeling of the scene from this day, and I want to push the values a little bit more on the sky to make those lighter areas of the clouds stand out even more. And again, I'm trying to vary my brush marks, looking around the scene, using the side of my brush, the tip of my brush, and turning my brush to create a variety of brush strokes and really trying to make that look as natural as I can. I'm adding a little bit more value to push the light of the clouds once more. I'm working my way down the scene, and as I near the horizon line, I put a little more detail because the clouds are narrower there, and I have to keep the perspective of those clouds in mind as well. So after that, I cleared my palette of these cooler colors so I'd have some clean space to work in, and now I'm mixing up the green for the light of the grass, and I'm using some cobalt turquoise, some cadmium yellow, some quinacridone gold, and some raw sienna. I'm hoping to create a vibrant green here to really give us that feeling of light hitting the grass. And I'm going right down to where the horizon line is and I'm touching that wet edge and my paper is still pretty damp overall. And you can start to see that lovely transition between the sky and the ground. And I'm working my way down and when I get to the middle ground here I want the light to be even stronger. I'm adding more warmth to my mixture of paint. This is the part of the painting where I want the most attention to be. And one of the ways that I can draw the attention there is by adding more saturation to this focal area of the painting. And finally, as I move down to the foreground, I'm cooling it off a little bit and I'm using more paint and creating a richer mixture. Now, my paper is still damp and I really want this tree to feel like it's glowing, so I'm getting a very warm mixture of quinacridone gold and raw sienna. And I'm dropping this in 
while it's still wet and letting these colors just fuzz to create that feeling of glow. And now that I'm done with my first wash, I'm gonna let the paper dry. And after it dried, I'm coming back and I'm painting a large connected shape. I'm really squinting at the scene, trying to look at these trees as one large connected shape. And I go ahead and I connect the shadow right into the form of the trees. And I'm pulling that shadow across the landscape. And as we get these middle values in to the painting, you can really start to see the light show up. Now I'm going back to this main tree and I'm adding a little bit more value, some middle value first, and then while that's damp, I'm getting some stronger paint and painting the shadow side of the tree because I really want to emphasize that light hitting to the left side of the tree and the opposite side of the tree is much darker. And now I'm creating a shadow that grounds that tree and connects it into the scene. And once that is done, I'm connecting the background trees into the side of that tree while it's still wet and adding a few touches to the background. And I'm also giving that second tree a shadow which will help it feel more grounded. You might notice that a few times I've used my fingernail and I've scratched in some highlights while the wash is still wet. This is a good way to get little bits of light and kind of break up areas of dark and you can suggest some detail by using this method. And at this point I'm going back up to that tree to the far left and I'm giving it a little more texture to bring that area forward. Now I'm adding a few fence posts and a little bit more detail into the middle ground of the painting. Again, this reinforces that this is the main important area of the painting and brings a little bit of realism to the painting. And finally, I'm adding some birds up into the sky. And this is a good way to give the painting a feeling of motion. And finally, I'm taking my middle sized brush and I'm adding just a little bit of texture into that middle ground again. And a few final touches of texture. And here is a look at my final painting. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems my five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.